everyone! Today I'll be showing how I styled my wig and more Zova accessories for my Epic Reads book look for Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. I absolutely love the Grishivers and I'm so so psyched to watch the show! If you'd like to see the full video on how I put this book look for Shadow and Bone all together, be sure to check it out over on Epic Reads hashtag book look playlist, which I'll have linked down below. For this look, I wanted to incorporate some Alina cosplay elements while using the color palette and more Zova stag antlers from the paperback cover. To start those Morozova antlers, I'm using some aluminum foil to custom mold the shape I want for my antlers. I primarily wanted to use aluminum foil since it's lightweight and I can customize its shape. Once I've got the general shape of my antlers smooshed all together and supported with some painter's tape, I'm testing to see how they look on me and testing where I should glue them to my headband later on. Next step now is to wrap all of the antler pieces in duct tape to smooth out the rough textures from the aluminum foil, just so it's easier to custom paint them later on. Now that all of our antler pieces are taped up, I'm using some scrap paper and a glue and water mixture to paper mache cover the antlers. You don't necessarily have to do this step, and if you have the right paints, you can paint the duct tape as it is, but I personally didn't want the mummy-like wrap texture to show through and wanted my antlers as smooth as possible before painting them. Once the majority of those antlers are covered up, I'm setting them out to dry for about an hour before spot patching them with more paper mache. After that, I set them out to dry overnight. While those antlers dry, I'm using some craft wire to start forming the base of my Morozova antler collar and bending it around my neck to see how it'll sit before covering it all with foam clay. To prep my wire before foam clay, I'm loosely wrapping some floral wire around it to create a rougher texture just so the clay foam has more of an anchor and can stick to the wire a little better. This was also the exact moment I discovered that my new kitty cat, Bazzy, loves to play with wire. So here he is just keeping me company while I work on this. This was my first time ever working with clay foam, and although it was kind of frustrating at first, I've officially become obsessed with it. It honestly feels like I just unlocked some new magical equipment like in an RPG video game when it comes to leveling up my book looks. Fittingly so, for this Morozova collar, I used white magic air dry moldable cosplay foam clay, which I purchased from Amazon. So right out of the bucket, the clay foam feels kind of like playing with wet marshmallows. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of gross, but it feels so cool and it's really, really fun to play with. Anyways, I'm taking a small amount to practice rolling it out and molding it before laying some down onto my Morozova collar. Once I feel like I have a thickness that I like, I'm wrapping and smooshing and stretching it all around and across the collar wire. Like the aluminum base for my antlers, I'm also folding and smooshing in some tines and points to make them look a little bit more like antlers. So I did not account for how I was going to dry or mount my clay foam collar, so while I continued to add more tines and points, I set the collar onto an upside down Tupperware bowl just so the collar would still hold its rounded shape and so the tine points wouldn't buckle or bend out of shape while I worked. Once one side of the collar was done, I eventually opted to use duct tape to mount the center back part of the collar while leaning it up against the bowl for better support. I still don't really know the best way to really mount something like this, but would love and appreciate any advice or tips and tricks from anyone who has worked with clay foam before. Please comment down below with any advice. Thanks! Anyways, for the other side of the collar, I did the same process by rolling out my foam clay, smooshing it onto the collar, and cutting up smaller bits of clay to form the tines. I'm purposely leaving the backmost part of the collar wire exposed since it'll be covered by my wig for the final look, and so the collar maintains some flexibility, which will allow me to loosen and tighten it however I like. Once I have my general shape, I'm testing to see how the collar looks and how it will sit on me, especially since I have lots of pokey parts. I don't want to get constantly stabbed on film day or risk getting caught on or breaking any of the tines while painting the full look. Though I like the shape of it, I quickly realized that I may have made the antlers too thick and too big for my neck size. But that's okay! The clay didn't dry completely yet, so I just started over again, making the antlers much thinner and dainty looking. While the foam clay is still soft, I'm adding some more small details and textures to the antlers by using my clay tool to poke some holes and divots to help mask the wavy lines from the clay. Once that's done, I'm hanging it somewhere where my cat won't get to it so it can dry overnight. Along with my Morozova collar, I really wanted to try and incorporate some golden epaulets to emulate the keftas that the Grisha wear in the story and to pay reference to all the beautiful Alina fan art that I used as inspiration online for this look! To do that, I needed something lightweight enough and moldable enough for me to customize and glue to myself, so I decided to use paper doilies to shape my epaulets to my liking. I'm starting by folding and cutting one doily in half and cutting off one third of another doily. The latter one is what will serve as my epaulet base, and I'm using double-sided sticky tape to attach the half doily on top of it. I'm then layering and curving the corners up to get this flared up shape. I'm also constantly trying them on my shoulders to gauge how they will sit, adjusting as I go. Once I'm happy with the shape of my epaulets, I'm double checking how I'll attach them to my skin for paint day. I didn't catch this on camera, but I also used some hot glue to keep the structure of the epaulets nice and stiff, and to solidify the stick from the double-sided sticky tape's hold on them. 
after I'm setting everything aside to dry overnight and getting started on my wig. If you've watched my behind the scenes prop making videos for the Everlasting Rose and Bone Cryer's Moon, I'm using the exact same curling technique for those wigs on this Shadow and Bone Alina wig. Also, not only does my kitty cat Bazzy love to play with wire, but he also really likes to play with my wigs whenever I work on them. So here he is just being a cute little tiny smoosh who I just want to squeeze. And he's so cute, I love him. He's actually sitting right next to me while I record this voiceover. Woo! Anyways, once I have all my curlers in, I'm locking in those curls with my handy dandy steamer. I'm using a plastic bag to trap an even amount of steam over the entire wig, letting it sit for five minutes before removing it, and then hitting it with a bunch of heavy duty hairspray and letting it cool and set overnight. While everything is drying, I'm getting started on forming my halo headpiece for the wig. I purchased this beautiful star decorated halo headband from Amazon, and I had this idea of using a bigger gold wreath ring as my back halo. However, I didn't have a good idea as to how I was going to attach it. So I used the same gold craft wire that I used for my Morozova collar since it was a little bit more lightweight than the wreath and easier to attach to my hair. After pinning the new halo to my head, I'm then testing to see where I'm going to place my paper mache antlers. Once I had a good idea of where I wanted everything to sit, I went went ahead and hot glued my antlers onto some headbands off camera. I used a wider based headband for my bigger antlers so they had a wider base of support and a thinner wire headband for my smaller front antlers so it would be easier to hide it under the wig come paint day. Before painting everything and pinning it to the wig, I'm first testing how to cover the headbands with my own hair and checking how stable everything will be for film day. The next morning, once everything is nice and dry, I'm taking some white primer spray paint and spraying all over my antlers and my Morozova antler collar. To get a nice even coat of white all over the antlers and the headbands, I had to do about two coats to get an opaque coverage waiting 30 minutes in between each layer. Once the white primer paint is dry, I set my Morozova collar aside just because I really wanted that accessory to stay as pure white as possible. After I roughly sprayed blue and silver spray paints all over my antlers to mimic the book cover paint textures. For these layers, I waited about 30 to 45 minutes in between the blue and the silver layers just to give each of the colors more time to dry so they wouldn't mix together while spraying. While those antlers dry, I'm spray painting my paper epaulets gold, and for these, because they're paper, I didn't want to oversaturate or warp the shape of them, so I sprayed them in quick, small spurts so they wouldn't get too wet too fast. After all those accessories sat outside to dry for a couple hours, I took some varying shades of blue and silver acrylic paints to fill in any white patches I missed while spray painting, and to better define the spilled paint texture-like designs from the cover. Once everything's all nice and painted, I set it out to dry overnight one more time. After a full overnight's time to dry, we are done and the accessories are ready to wear. Yay! I hope you all found this video helpful. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out the full book look for Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo over on Epic Reads hashtag book looks playlist, which I'll have linked down below. I wanted to give an enormous thank you to HarperCollins Publishers for commissioning me for this book look and an even bigger thank you to you all for watching. Let me know which book looks you'd like to see me do next and I'll see you all next time. Bye!